in this video, we'll lightly touch upon the ternary phase diagrams. By now, we should be very familiar with the binary phase diagrams. In binary phase diagrams, we have A and B two components, and the phase diagram itself is a two-dimensional map. For ternary phase diagrams, since you have three components, so that gives you a volume, and the phase diagram itself is three-dimensional. There are different ways to look at ternary phase diagrams. You can fix the composition while varying the temperature. An extreme example is if you look at the side of the ternary phase diagram, it's actually a binary phase diagram. The three sides give you three binary phase diagrams. You can also fix the temperature but vary the composition. Since the vertical axis is temperature, all you have to do is to take slices, and from each slice, you get an equilateral triangle. In this example, at a very high temperature, everything is liquid, it's called in the S phase. As you decrease the temperature, more and more other phases will form. Here, the 3D ternary phase diagram, that volume, can be viewed as the stacking of those equilateral triangles. Another way to present the ternary phase diagrams is by plotting the contour lines with the same temperature. In this example here, the 3D volume on the left can be projected into a 2D ternary phase diagram. For example, if we are interested in which phases are present at 1000 degrees C across the compositional space, we can find these 1000 degree contour lines in this corner near C, also this corner near B, and this corner near A. In these three corners, the phases are liquid plus solid, whereas in the area enclosed by these contour lines, there is only liquid. The next question is, how do we read ternary phase diagrams? Let's go back to the simple example where we have only one slice of the ternary phase diagram at a fixed temperature. The first thing we like to do is to identify the phases present with a given composition. This is pretty straightforward. If we use the composition at W as an example, at this temperature, there are two phases present, that's W and L. If the composition lies somewhere in the bottom right corner, like here, then the phases will be Z and L. The next question is, can we use the lever rule to quantify the phase fraction at a specific composition? The quick answer is yes, but it is not that straightforward. We'll come back to that in a few slides. The second thing we like to do is to read off the composition from the ternary phase diagram. For example, we have a composition that lies on the point where it is marked by the blue dot. To get the A content, all you have to do is to draw a line that is parallel to BC, and you can read off that's 50%. You don't have to only go to the right-hand side. If you read from the left-hand side, it's also 50%. To get the composition of C, then you draw a line that is parallel to AB, and it's 20% C. Similarly, for the content of B, you draw a line that is parallel to AC and read off that's 30% B. Next, we'll introduce you a very important concept in the ternary phase diagrams called the tie line. In this example, assume we have two ternary alloys with compositions at S and L. If you mix S and L at any arbitrary compositions, the mixture composition will lie on the line defined by L and S. For example, for the composition at the point marked by P, this is achieved by mixing one part of L with three parts of S. Now, let's look at the same phase diagram in a different light. Instead of having S and L two ternary alloys, let's define S as a point on the solidus line and L a point on the liquidus line. In this case, along the tie line, you can apply the lever rule to estimate the fraction of the solid phase versus the liquid phase. If I want to know the weight fraction of the solid phase, 
uh, go to the other end of the lever using LP divided by the LS. Similarly, if I'm interested in the weight fraction of the liquid phase, I again go to the other side of the lever using SP divided by SL. This video concludes the first part of the phase transformation series. And in the next video, we will move to a new topic, diffusion.